If you look on the web, people say, oh, you know, testosterone is increased by weight training. You want to do the big, heavy compound movement, squats and deadlifts and chins and things of that sort. But what about the scientific studies? Like what's the actual basis for this? Because if you just take a step back and look at this from the perspective of a scientist, you'd say, okay, what is a squat? A squat is loading up a bunch of uh, weights on a bar and then, you know, sitting down essentially and standing up over and over again. Um, what's a deadlift? It's lifting heavy weights from the ground. Why would that increase testosterone? right? This is what's often not discussed in the weight training or even the exercise science community. What, what would actually stimulate the release of testosterone from the adrenals and or testes? And which one is it? Adrenals or testes or both? And that's often not discussed, but as a neuroscientist, this is the kinds of things we think about because we think always that genes don't create behavior. Immune systems don't know when to be activated. Lungs don't know when to inhale or exhale. Hearts don't know when to beat except for the information that it gets from neurons. The nervous system controls all of that. And so really the answer has to be in the neural system that's related to these particular types of weight bearing exercises. Heavy weight training. So this is weight training where the, the sets are done with anywhere from, you know, kind of one to eight rep range. So this translates differently depending on ratio of muscle fiber type and so forth. But where basically people are working at anywhere from like 70% to 95% of their maximum, or sometimes even going right down to their one repetition maximum, really kind of, you know, max effort. What you find is that using the nervous system in a way in which they're moving heavy loads so that i would translate to recruitment of high threshold motor units for you muscle physiologists and there's a rule in muscle physiology about the neur neuron recruitment for moving muscles where you basically use the minimum number of motor units of neurons to activate muscle as you possibly can as loads increase you have to recruit more and more neurons it's it, you always hear about recruiting muscle fibers but really it's recruiting more neurons to recruit more muscle fibers and what you find is that heavy weight training but not weight training to failure where completion of a repetition is impossible leads to the greatest increases in testosterone now i'm sure there are a bunch of exercise jockeys out there that are gonna you know come at me with a bunch of things where oh yeah but high volume and this and training to failure and that sure um, if you're willing to kind of put things side by side, adjust for um, exogenous testosterone treatment and all the, the rest, which was done in these studies, what you find in general is that weight training with heavy loads, so anywhere from one rep maximum to somewhere in the you know, six to eight rep repetition range in males or females increases testosterone significantly. And it does it for about a day, sometimes up to 48 hours. And the studies that I found, which seem to hold the most rigor or weight, there's something about the engagement of the neurons that recruit high threshold motor units in muscle when moving heavy loads, but not to failure, that has to provide some sort of feedback signal either to the gonad to produce more testosterone or is increasing the activity of receptors in the body. This basically boils down to a particular set of protocols where if you want to increase testosterone for whatever reason, that weight training with heavy loads, but not to failure seems to be the best supported, at least scientifically supported solution to that. Now, it may not raise your testosterone levels as high as you want, but it's definitely taking things in the correct direction. Now, many of you might be endurance athletes or also enjoy exercise besides heavy weight bearing exercise. And there are several studies exploring whether or not it has any effect if you do the endurance activity first or second. And the takeaway from all of this was that endurance activity, if performed first, leads to decreases in testosterone during the weight training session. In other words, if you want to optimize testosterone levels, it seems to be the case that weight training first and doing cardio type endurance activity afterward is the right order of business. Now, when these are done on separate days, it doesn't seem to have an effect. There is, they showed no statistical interaction, but it seems that if you're going to do these in the same workout episode, that it's move heavy loads first, then do cardiovascular exercise.